Okay, you've been doing High Life for a very long time, and um, let me see, um, how will you say the state of High Life now in Ghana is compared to those days you started? Is it progressing or is it dwindling? Um, I have to say that uh, basically it has been static, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, that explains a lot of the problems High Life is facing because it has not progressed, it has not evolved. You know, uh, anything that is creative, that is cultural, okay. needs to be, uh, needs to evolve and change, okay, and go with the time. So, in those terms, I would say that most of the problems that High Life is facing today, it's because it's been started. Now, there are reasons for that. Okay. Uh, most of <coughs> most of it is attributable to the fact that um, during the coup d'état eras, you know, when there were curfews, uh, music, live music died because nobody could go around at 6 p.m. And so, um, a lot of the uh, music became either internalized or got the musicians went outside of the country to apply their trade. You understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. So the creativity uh, dwindled, okay, and um, people internalized in the sense that they, they went, uh, live musicianship died, and with, with it, musicianship. So it became more or less electronic, because people went to computers and started to create music, which was amenable to hip-hop, you know what I mean? So hip-hop became the, the order of the day, I also have to say that a lot of the uh, top DJs um, created management companies and adopted uh, hip hop and hip life musicians, which they promoted and pushed a lot. So, high life seemed to take a vacation. But, fortunately for us, high life is back. And you know, hip life itself is a baby to high life because hip life is based on the high life rhythm with rap on top, you understand? Mm -hmm. So basically, I think that High Life is still alive and kicking, but it's not as strong as it should be. And we're working towards that. Okay, so is there anything you think we can do to improve it, to make it get stronger and better? And There's a lot of things we can do. Okay. There's a lot of things we can do. First of all, I think that the, the proper structures need to be put in place, because, you know, this is uh, supposed to be a professional business. Professional management, professional recording, professional uh, event organizing, you know, everything that goes with it. And we don't seem to have all those structures in place. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, first of all, that uh, a government like the government of Ghana should put much more effort into this thing because it can travel very far and sure. create a good image. And not only that, but also create uh, an import economy, I mean an export economy. Yeah, so that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, high life musicians need to stand up, you know, and smell the pepper. They should know that people are not buying into high life because high life has been stagnant. They should be more creative with it. I believe personally that high life should become much more organic instead of synthetic. Mm. That means they should use more indigenous instrumentation and sounds in, in the work, okay, to make it more distinct. I, I believe that that is what the world will buy into because hip hop is not from here. And, you know, as a copy, you can never be the original. You understand? So you always be second grade. But her life, if done properly, will be already, always be original and will be first grade. You understand? Uh -huh. So also, I think other factors that come into it is that we, we're talking about standards. You know, standards of uh, professionalism, standards of recording, standards of the video. Because it's, you know, in this digital age, you yeah. know, everybody has access to the best in the world. So if you're doing mediocre stuff, nobody wants to look at it, not even your own children. So we've got to raise our game, sure. you know, and, 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 and much what the world, the best the world has to offer. Mm, okay. When we talk about high life, we, we actually look at, um, let's say, live band. Um, what would you say about the state of live band now 
in this generation compared to when you started? Well, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's not as bad as it was very recently. I think that live music is on the rise, it's coming up very strongly. I was very, very gratified when I went to uh, the Samini show with Dimako okay. and noticed that the top musicians on that show were backed by a live band. Okay? And it was a fantastic show. Okay? So that informs me that live musicianship is coming back and I think that, you know, at the rate at which it's going, it's going to surpass even the old times. Okay. And um, currently, in this generation now, in Ghana, presently I will speak, we know, I don't know if you are familiar with the Azunto, the Azunto yeah, music. No, yeah. Almost all musicians actually want to do that now. Do you think um, the coming in of Azunto is going to hamper the high life uh, rebranding? Well, I think it depends on how it is handled and treated. But Azunto has been a good thing because it has exposed Ghana and Ghanaian music worldwide, okay? But like I said, you know, with the right professionalism, the right marketing, you know, we should be able to take advantage of this to sell our music worldwide, okay? So Azunto is not necessarily, it's a good thing if we handle it right, okay? But, you know, we shouldn't just jump on the bandwagon and think that it's going to carry itself forward and sell itself to the world. We have to sell it, we have to market it and do it right. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Um, now, I want to ask you one or two questions because you'll be performing alongside uh, another legend like yourself, Hugh Masakela. What do you really do? You, um, what do you really know about him, and how um, do you think the night is going to be like? Well, I've known him for quite a long time. Okay. Um, I've actually worked with him in the studio when we were recording a charity track called Dream Child, which I wrote and you know produced at Scratch Studios in East Lincoln. And he came to not only blow the trumpet on it, but he sang on it as well, and he even gave a speech about the charity for which we're doing it, the single. Um, before that, too, I've known him in certain circles because being a musician and all that. But this is the first time I'm getting the opportunity to play alongside him. And you know, when you call him a legend, you cannot call me a legend in the same breath. He's way, way ahead of me. You understand? If he is a legend, please, I, I bow to him. I'm, I'm nowhere near him in, 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 you know, in those terms. So I think he's one of the phenomena of African music. Not only that, he has the right mindset. You understand? He understands what it is to be African. He understands what, it's, what it means to uh, cultivate and inculcate our culture and everything we do. He understands how, when we lose our history and our culture, we are nobody. You understand? And how, therefore, we tend to copy blindly and you know not have any basis. So for me, Hugh is a great hero that uh, I worship at his feet. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, very, very honored to be playing with him, and you know, it will inspire me to give one of my best shows ever. Because you know, I don't want Hugh to leave me looking like a novice. You understand? Okay, but, <laughs> but you've actually done something with him before. You said, Sorry? You said you've done something with him before. Yeah, yeah, no, we recorded, I recorded him in the studio, yeah, yeah. Okay, so will it be another great pleasure to do something with him? Oh, when no doubt. It's always, a, you know, an honor, actually, to work with him. It's an honor and a pleasure to work with you, okay? Okay, so um, what final word do you have to tell your fans out there who have really missed you for a while, who really know that you'll be on this show? What do you have to tell them? Well, I want to tell them that this is a great opportunity to sample the finest of music from Ghana, from South Africa, and from the world, okay? And with Hugh there, it's going to be like totally world class, okay? And being organized by the Global Media Alliance, you know, there's no doubt. I, I was at the show last year, uh, and you know, it was fantastic. The atmosphere, the music, the quality, everything was great. But this year, the difference is that they're going to have me on the show. 
Dusty Brinks. <laughs> Dusty Brinks. It's going to be extra, extra. Read all about it. Come on, watch. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much. Ah, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you.